Now I would like to welcome our first expert who has over 35 years of extensive experience in the conception, planning, analysis, design, detailing, and evaluation of multi-story buildings and special structures. He has worked in over 500 different projects in the areas related to built environment. This only covers his expertise in structural engineering. He is also a book author, speaker, software developer, photographer, and of course, professor. Currently, he is the Vice President for Knowledge Transfer at the Asian Institute of Technology. Please join me in welcoming Dr. David Anwar. Dr. Navid, please tell us, what are the new developments in structural design of tall buildings? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jennifer, and uh, we, I'm, I'm very glad that you can all join us. Um, actually, as you know, tall buildings is one of the most important habitat that human uh, society has uh, been developing over especially the last 100 years. And recently, now the, the need for the tall building is increasing rapidly because we have urbanization. So a lot of people are moving from the rural to the urban areas. So a lot of new buildings have to be built both for accommodation, for offices, for hotels, for other things. So the tall building demand is increasing. That's the first important development. Second is that the expectations of the people from the buildings is also increasing in terms of their structural safety, in terms of how they perform during earthquakes. They are more, you should be more resist, resilient to the hazards. They should be more energy efficient. They should be more sustainable. So the expectation in a building is more than just a building has, has also put more demands on architects and engineers as well, especially on the structural engineers who ensure the safety and the long-term uh, sustainability of the buildings. Uh, the key challenges that are now we can we can identify in the, in the tall building design are related to how other disciplines are developing very rapidly. For example, the elevator, um, elevator, uh, the, the developments in the sustainability, in the communications, in many other things. So that impact the design of the tall buildings. But in these, the design of the structural structures themselves, there's also a lot of development in terms of the new materials that are coming up, new ways of construction. Uh, much taller buildings are being made now. Uh, the time expected time to complete the building is much shorter. The requirement for the structure to be as lean, as minimal, is also putting demand on how efficiently the structures need to be designed. Uh, people are expecting high performance from structures because they they expect that the structures will provide them safety and security for for themselves and, and also their the built built environment. So the expectation from these the engineers is now that we are well aware of all of the technologies and all of the uh, materials and systems needed to design. New software tools are coming up all the time, so engineers have to make sure that they learn those. So. Combining all of this, the engineers of the tall buildings, structural designers, need to be aware of the developments in many related fields, including, of course, the structural design itself, because the tall buildings are normally the landmarks of any, any development, and, the, and they define many cities. So for that reason, uh, the, the, the design of the buildings is, is becoming a very important uh, aspect of what the structural engineers do. So what kind of expertise and skills are needed? Right, um, because as I mentioned that we have uh, challenges in terms of what the buildings must do in, in the current environment. So first of all, as, as I mentioned, safety, of course, is, is very important. And uh, to design safe structures and to ensure that the safety is actually can be demonstrated, new design methods have come up, like the performance-based design, nonlinear analysis, nonlinear dynamic analysis, and so on. So engineers have to learn, uh, first of all, understand what these methods can do for us and how they can deliver the, the value for the public. At the same time, how the tools can be used to effectively uh, implement these methodologies that 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 have been uh, you know proposed from the research. Uh, so there's a very fast, uh, rapid change in the design methodologies, in the design codes, in the design tools. So engineers have to learn all of that. 
More importantly, now we also have the, the, the challenge of monitoring the buildings that have been constructed. So many buildings have been constructed, mm -hmm. so they need to be monitored, they need to be evaluated, they need to be retrofitted, they need to be enhanced because the codes change, the demands change and so on. So another challenge is to be able to evaluate the existing buildings properly to be able to provide good solutions to enhance them so not only their life can be increased but also the use can be extended and because this is related to sustainability because if the buildings can be long lasting then we use you know less materials to rebuild them and another challenge is economy uh, th that the the most of the people now expect these structures to be highly efficient uh, and, and economical so which means that we need to go beyond the codes. We need to understand how the systems work. And just basic understanding of the building codes may not be sufficient to design tall buildings. So, so those are some of the challenges that engineers are facing. And continuous learning is very important for that. What they have learned in the universities a few years ago may not be applicable at this point. So another challenge for the engineers is to keep up with the recent developments and to be able to to continue to, to learn uh, at the same time while they're working. So it's difficult for them to leave the job and go to the university and get a degree again. But if they can do that simultaneously, that would be a very good combination. Thank you so much, Dr. Naveed. You heard it from the expert himself. Engineers must continue to learn and upgrade their knowledge.